All right, so let's have a look at a prelim of the cores in granite that I've drilled with a copper tube using a type of drill that is actually depicted in ancient Egypt. There's even a hieroglyph of it going back as far as uh, Saqqara Mastaba in the Old Kingdom. All of this will come to more, but the, an important feature and something that uh, well, hasn't been shown uh, I haven't seen done. Now there are a few papers in regards to this and again I'll cover them more. For instance the 1983, uh, I think it was from Penn State, they did some experiments in regards to uh, to drilling uh, in r red granite and using different type of abrasives but they, they were using a thousand RPM drill with a little bit of bow drilling in between. So they weren't really replicating primitive techniques, they were just examining how different abrasives affect red granite. Uh, this is uh, 40 grit, so if you go get some sandpaper, uh, 40 grit probably be the, the most coarse that you'll get, uh, aluminium oxide or corundum, of course, as is found in the ancient world. Uh, that's basically dark, so the experiments that have been done are all using uh, 60 and above, so they're using a very fine abrasive. I made my own uh, by breaking some masonry discs and so not just very fine abrasive I used an even sorry a very what's deemed very coarse abrasive uh, I made my own much coarser abrasive and tested that against uh, different types of granite so with a, either a finer what I consider fine is considered very coarse in terms of uh, sandpaper and again I made my own uh, just to test that now so there we have a different cores. Now, uh, this is the first core I made. Some of the photos aren't the best, but uh, others are much better. Uh, this, although it was a failure as a circular core, it did teach me a lot. And so that's one side of it. And you'll get a hint at the striations there. That's the other side, and that uh, taught me a lot about... I had an idea, but it just proved the idea, and I'm going to get back to that. For instance, at Abu Si, this curved stone, which has a impossible to achieve therefore secondary stage machine machining lost ancient high technology type of stuff uh, there we get the side view so you can see one side that was in the uh, core video i show how i did this what i did wrong and how to improve it so this was a failure but it did have a lot to teach so that's these are the same cores now i just use some chalk to help outline the striations the type, not only the type of abrasive, but uh, you know, using a very coarse abrasive especially will change that. Uh, this one is just worth looking at, but uh, again, this was the first one, so you can sort of see I've highlighted the steps in blue, but then you see the striation uh, patterns in there. So we can really skip past this one, that's the top view of it. This was the second core in black granite, and, and okay, the photo's not the best, so you get a but we've got better photos of it. There's another angle of it. Uh, this was a, as circular cores go, uh, good but not the best. I improved on it later. If you see the top view of it, and also um, if you're fam uh, familiar with core seven, so not only the tapering, they're all narrow at the top and get wider at the bottom, but even this slight curve, and I'll show that, that perfectly matches uh, the famous core seven. This is a top view and it's slightly elliptical. I just by that was my second attempt. Just by rotate by moving my position, rotating around the stone, I was able to eliminate this ellipse, and uh, all my cores then become essentially perfectly round at the top. Just a matter of either rotating the stone beneath you, or if you're sitting standing on a big granite block, just the uh, the driller just moves around in every few minutes, move 90 degrees, 90 degrees. That eliminates the bias in there. So that, that's that same core. Uh, with some chalk to highlight the striations. You'll note, uh, firstly, the the angle of them, but also the differences in size between them as well. So just like in, in Core 7, we'll see these same features, and also how the striation jumps over. So there will be parts of the stone where it's hitting uh, you know, uh, different crystals, and it creates a gap. That's this continuous line in core 7, now if you wrap a thread around it, you can maybe make it appear continuous, but even from the latex imprint, the, the lines are broken up, and they're broken up just like this. 
Uh, now here's another angle of that same one, and again, uh, the parts where the lines come closer together move further apart. Also, the angle of it will appear to create a spiral. And I, you know, if I was to present and say oh, I created a spiral, well, oh, yeah, it looks like it. No, it's not. Uh, now, for instance, that's another spot where certain parts in the stone, different minerals, the drilling and the striations left by it will change. Here is, uh, again, just another angle. So I'm just rotating the stone 90 degrees and you'll see, you know, even, uh, again, I'm going to do this with better photos. This is just sort of a prelim look at it and how a different, the different striations patterns appear. Uh, this was my first one in grey granite. Now it's uneven because I reused a guide hole. So I, I begin the hole by using a wooden guide. Once it's deep enough, then I can remove that. Uh, but I used a one that had been slightly worn out, so the drill, uh, the drill was wobbling around in that hole, and it created that uh, difference in in shape. Uh, also, I I still wasn't rotating the stone, so the the top view of this will cr create a slightly elliptical one as well. Uh, one of the reasons I also was interested in this core, so I chose a spot on on the granite where there was these large chunks of I would assume is quartz, these big white lumps and I drilled this just using crushed sandstone. I didn't use corundum um, or any sort of other mix. This was done just with uh, crushed quartz and sandstone which is you know, feldspar quartz. So there you see. So, But again this step, um, so it wasn't a total success but uh, I again actually I was at that point I wanted to recreate that step so in future experiments I can recreate this impossible without lost tire technology stuff there's and I'll just rotate it again and you'll note that the different uh, parts of the stone granite is not like a solid thing it's all you know minerals bits and pieces that have been cemented together over time uh, so there's a the top view again this is slightly elliptical <coughs> pardon <coughs> rubbing some chalk over it to highlight the striations, the high points and again a lot of jumping over. Twist it around a little bit. Uh, differences in the size between these striations again where it will hit certain parts and skip over uh, and uh, in regards I'll go more but um, mica is a mineral if you just look it up it has near perfect cleavage which means that, and not only near perfect cleavage, but on multiple planes. So mica is a very uh, interesting mineral in that sense, and that mica, that mica gets ripped out of it in there is no real mystery, but we'll cover that more. So different angle, and again, how the striations are affected uh, by the minerals in there. Again, how some lines will, you know, they're not all you know, straight, and the, the gaps between them, there are all of these types of features such as the one you see there are the type of pattern you'll see in the so-called mysterious core 7. This is in black granite and I use a, not a very coarse grain in this one but this is also I use it, I'll show in a moment uh, one I did in red granite it appears to be sanded and the striations are very delicate to see but in another type of granite black granite they're more obvious, so it's not just yeah different stone, even for different stone from quarry to quarry will will change. Uh, this is a photo because again, if I superimpose that over core seven, it's got the same tapering and the same shape, um, exactly like core seven. By this time, I'd worked out how to you know just by rotating my position around the stone, I can now create very circular uh, cores and this chalk again to highlight different shapes will appear, uh, spots where it jumps over. Again, core 7 is not a continuous line. You can wrap a thread into certain trenches, but there will be parts such as this that jumps over. With my cores, I can create a spiral, and it was done by a hand tool, and I can wrap a thread around it, and, and it, it would appear to be a spiral, but it's not. It's, it's basically cherry-picking the spot that you want it to. And again, you'll see these same features where the differences between, you know, there'll be a large gap and then some parts will be very close together. Uh, some will be parallel with the top, some will be at an angle. 
uh, all right so now this is exactly the same stone in black granite but instead of using a fine abrasive such as this now I switched and I put in this very rough abrasive and I kept adding new abrasive all the time I would wash out the so I would begin with this and as you're drilling it wears down and becomes finer and finer I wouldn't allow that to happen with this core what I would do is just keep washing it out and adding new fresh abrasive very coarse abrasive so there's a very different appearance I have some comparison photos so black granite that's the same as the last one there are different angles of it but you still get the same profile you still get the tapering every single time uh, this will be tapered and now you can see how I've just rubbed the chalk over to highlight the, the high points and you get a very different profile very very different but again these same features as in core 7 this is with a uh, I would define it as a finer abrasive this would be a very coarse abrasive in sandpaper these are exactly the same stones and just a different abrasive type now I do I, I do the same with black gray and red granite I use a finer abrasive I compare that to a very coarse abrasive so this is a finer one and by this time they're, they're round now I've, I've worked out a few of the tricks of a trade how to do it and again you'll see uh, different angles places where the abrasive will Sort of will we'll come together it won't always be parallel with the top and it creates these sort of more chaotic shapes just like core 7 and again we're at places in different minerals hard spots where the, the line will stop because again the line is not continuous in core 7 a thread has been wrapped around it following a trench but you can pick and choose so wherever the at a spot like this where where the trench stops where the groove ends it's a matter of almost cherry picking at what point do you continue on with so uh, you, you know I can say that these are, are spiral if I so choose if I want to present that but I know it isn't because I drilled it it's uh, this is again grey granite very coarse abrasive so again now we see again different profile and when we compare the two uh, 40 grit and a much co coarser abrasive exactly the same stone but whatever happens you're always going to get a tapering and even this at the top how they have this curve inwards just like core 7 now uh, this is red granite now this one all of my cores have this little tip in there so at the little lip at the bottom now this one doesn't because I drilled it in where there were two sheets of granite stuck together like a granite bench top and so that was glue holding it beneath so that's why this one doesn't have that little lip at the bottom it's a finer abrasive this is red granite so now we're really closer to uh, core 7 uh, also for instance the sarcophagus in the Great Pyramid again the profile you know, I can you would think that that's core 7 the profile of it very circular Is slowing down but again uh, a finer grit rubbed a chalk over it you see where the line is jumping across just like core 7 sometimes the line will come closer sometimes further away uh, different bits of abrasive will get jammed in there and create these different uh, profiles on there okay now that's red granite but again I've gone from a finer abrasive and to a coarse one now I was using dip variations of emery so I'm, I'm just using this as an illustration of the, the the grain size it's not necessarily the abrasive that I was using on that particular core but a very coarse and once again we have the same so red gray or black granite it's very much about the abrasive that you're using in there that will create these different profiles and so black granite finer black granite coarse gray granite fine gray granite coarse red granite fine gray uh, red granite coarse and these top ones again I was inserting new fresh abrasive all the time and making sure that the finer stuff didn't uh, leave a sanded finish with these finer details all right so there's the red granite cores so far 
the way you apply. Firstly, the type of abrasive, the grain size you use as well affects it, and how often you wash out those cores. So this one was with very, very, very coarse abrasive, or probably would be like grit 10 um, on the scale, and constantly washing it out so that the uh, uh, the mud, the slurry to keep, just keep adding fresh abrasive washing out. So that gives you an idea, you know, between using a fine, Oh, this can even this type of marking can also be achieved by beginning with a coarse abrasive, but not flushing it out and letting it grind down. But uh, so it, the type of abrasive, how it's applied, how often the hole is uh, washed out, flushed out, is will make very very big difference. Uh, again, there's a comparison. Top is the very very coarse, and there on the bottom is. What I, what my fine abrasive is more a, is a larger grit size than the uh, Chris Dunn air quotes experiment. Uh, even the Penn State study, they the, they used 60 grit up to 240 grit, and they were using a 1,000 RPM drill to do it with a little bit of bow drilling. But that's uh, we'll come to this later. Now here are some other cores as well. And again, just to highlight the differences of between the lines, they don't all go, you know, they, for instance, you know, you see, see here it rises, um, and so there's uh, big gaps between them when it hits different minerals and, and jumps over. This is all done with a, a flywheel hand driven drill as is shown in ancient uh, Egyptian depictions including hieroglyph that can be found in Gardner's sign list in the section on uh, agriculture crafts and professions you'd think that that'd be that'd be like one of the first places to go to would be budge and gardeners and be looking for uh, the, the tools that are in there there are stone masons drills in these very very important texts which are still basically the Dictionary Bible in regards to hieroglyphics, hieroglyphics still now. There's another side, and again you'll see these really big jumps where it's uh, different minerals, crystals are there. Narrow gaps between the lines. Uh, you know, some will point up, then they'll go parallel. All of this, you know, that's okay. These, are, this is what happens when you actually do uh, not just one very, very bad, very, very, very bad experiment. Uh, but also when you do multiple ones with different types of granite using different types of abrasives there are no experimentation at all has been done by the Lost High Technology crew. Now this is uh, Chris Dunn's page here is Core 7 the latex uh, imprint I'm still waiting for the public release of some very very high resolution photos of Core 7 and the findings that are found from there but even from this latex imprint you can see like well the, where the big gaps are and between the lines now there are assertions made um, the well even so cutting the latex but there are a lot of issues but at the very least you see this these chaotic lines they're not all parallel uh, they they change in size there's gaps where it jumps over different grit sizes uh, yeah, okay, now, uh, th this is the one experiment that's been done with a core, by which is the basis by which, you know, says, oh, you can't do it because, you know, Chris Dunn couldn't repeat it. This is the actual experiment, how he done, and now, after trying but failing to get a, a good photograph of Dennis Stock's drilling experiment, okay, so this is what he come up with. I obtained a piece of red granite, a uh, two and a quarter inch tube over a flat surface, Chisel the shallow groove to begin, and use a uh, okay. Let's use a carbide tip drill uh, just to, anyway to begin with. I poured silicon carbide 80 mesh. Now the different abrasives leave different traces. He's chosen silicon carbide, not sand, uh, not corundum. Silicon carbide. That's number one. Hi, okay. Then I began to rotate the drill assembly, which weighed. Uh, well, apparently that's a. Uh, 60 pound weight I don't know how yeah anyway but that's again that's neither here nor there 
Uh, at first I tried using a bowstring with a lever cord but found it inefficient and awkward so I equipped the assembly with a common machine handle and rotated it about the bow with uh, rotated it without the bow I doubt the granite would knew the difference well okay that's yes it wouldn't have a difference because the bow has lateral forces it's not just turning around it's getting pulled side to side it's going to affect it but um, at first I tried with a bowstring and lever cord but found it inefficient and awkward now he's using this to debunk the uh, the bow drill experiment by Dennis Stocks who uses sand and the bow drill. So he's using silicon carbide and he's given away the bow drill and he's using this off-center handle. Uh, but it gets better than that. Okay, after reaching a depth of a quarter inch I switched to a diamond hole saw. Sink. Let that sink in. I switched to a diamond hole saw. Okay, then, in, then I inserted the copper tube again and uh the amount of time i like th this is and now in the end he achieved a core and the diameter at the top 4.914 centimeters diameter at the bottom 5.019 so a one millimeter taper one millimeter difference in the top and the bottom uh, with a hand tool apparently we'll get to this because this this is a this is, and he couldn't even knock it out with a with you know master craftsman super engineer has achieved this well this is a this is very this is very condemned okay but look, this we need to examine more but we go back to the latex imprint and again just like the uh cause there where we have this uh chaotic uh, the lines that in every single core first every single core I have is tapered significantly tapered and every single core depending on the mesh has where the, where the lines are more chaotic and they skip and they jump over so just like you see that part missing we have the same imprint here in the latex core now string wrapping this is a link from the same page uh, this is tracing the continuous line that goes around using a piece of thread. Note the differences of it. The line moves around up and down, thickness. Now, even some point, apparently, it crosses over. So that's tracing out the core. Uh, this is the continuous spiral uh, precise machine drilling. Look at the how it comes in closer there. Curves up, curves down, gets closer, gets further away. Somehow it's sort of, you know, maybe he's just using the same thread, but, you know, coming back to there but either way this part what do you see in this continuous spiral okay we have the same patterns uh, in there but all those different you know it gets closer it gets further away little deeper all these missing gaps so uh pieces like this well it's just yeah okay it's <laughs> if well you know they could have saved themselves some embarrassment um really just by doing some actual experiments uh actual real experiments so there's a core seven there's the continuous spiral in there now i'm going to uh now that i've done experiments and tested this and actually used ancient techniques I didn't like all oh, well, the bow drills awkward and inefficient we can't do that and yet somehow it's wow <laughs> really wow now and ultimately he somehow using this hand tool oh I forgot the best part as I worked the tube deeper into the granite I consciously wobbled it more than I needed to so that the surface cores and holes were ground away wow really uh, if he had um, whether you're using a bow drill or a flywheel, you need to improve your technique to remove the wobble. Uh, to consciously add, I consciously wobbled it. Wow, really, man? Uh, you know, you must think everyone's stupid. And silicon carbide and the diamond core hole. This is it. so. Every, let's assume that he has ninja skills where he can keep that drill so straight that he has to consciously add a wobble. And that he could, uh, and that he alone, of everyone who's ever done uh, actual experiment, whether it's Dennis Stocks of Scientists Against Myth Channel, always achieve a taper. Now that taper, 
I'm, I, I kid you not, um, he thinks it's, you know, that somehow the tape approves lost high technology. And he be, originally he believed it was ultrasonic drilling. Now he thinks it's a thermic lance. This is how he explains the taper. Wow. Okay, now every core, including the ones illustrated by Petri, have that taper. Everyone who's done an experiment, actually done an experiment, using primitive techniques and using abrasives known to be used at that time, achieves a taper. So even, like, again, that's an illustration. This is Petri. And, and Petri's illustration is, oh, yeah, it's really, well, it is good because, again, you're seeing, you note know, all these changes. Now, the illustration, of course, doesn't compare to the photo of Core 7. And so, um, and again, these aren't the most high rep, but you'll see the differences as lines come close. Well, just follow the thread, yeah? Okay, the line separates, it comes closer together. Uh, you know, and, and this, is, this is the machined tool, you know, with a continuous, you know, feed rate. What, what the hell, man? What the hell? No, no, it's, uh, it's just a, wow, it's, it's wow. Um, I, I could wrap a thread around, around these and go, ah, oh, look, here it is, you know, but it's just a matter of where do you trace the line, when, when it jumps over, where these lines end, where, where do you trace the line? You can cherry pick and you can make it fit anywhere. Uh, you know, well, it crossed over here apparently, so, or, or did that come really close? Let's say, no, no, it actually, the thread crosses over, so, no, it's not, it's not a high speed precision advanced lost high technology drill. Man, come on. Like, wow, really, this is, uh, is this, is this Monty Python? You know, what, is this a joke? Am I a joke to you? You know, you think everyone's a fool? And again, how did, how the hell did he not achieve a taper? If he did this by hand, if his hand turning, uh, this mechanism of his with this long tube as well, going back and forth, it's an off center handle. How can you keep that straight? Now, you could say he has ninja skills of coordination, and probably there's someone out there who could do it. Yet, uh, he found a bow drill inefficient and awkward. This, this is so inefficient. This would take so much longer because of the RPM compared to that. Like, this is, this is the definition of an inefficient hand-powered drill. And speaking of awkward, so if you can't work, if a bow drill is awkward for you, and you can, you can do this, and note that he doesn't say how long it took him. If you're going back and forth, this would be like compared to a bow drill or a flywheel, this would be so slow. And I'd be sure that he'd make a point of how long it took to do. There's nothing, no, no mention of that in there. Maybe he could bring that up later, but um, like, wow, wow, you know, you can't even, yeah. I, and I, I don't personally, I don't believe this either. I, I don't believe that he couldn't knock that core out with... Uh, with this drill and to get, I mean, with this copper piece and to get such deformation in there, I really don't, you know, I, I pre, earlier video, I, I, I did it with wood and copper and no deformation in the wood, no deformation in the copper. So I, I just can't explain that. Uh, I really, this is, um, uh, you know, this is a fish market to me, mate. This, this stinks. But even just by his own definition, diamonds, a uh, hole saw, silicon carbide, bow drill, inefficient, and awkward and yet he can manage to to drill so perfectly this is the type of result you would get with a bench drill or or, or fixed you know like a frame to to drive it down I, I i don't believe that this is authentic i that's i can't uh really explain it now if if he could manage a bow drill i'm sure yeah anyway uh now th that's the actual this this is the state of affairs these are the uh, for those who jump on and say Chris Dunn, master engineer, craftsman, and use this, well, I really, Re uh, you, you, <laughs> you know, uh, wow, you know, get, get some copper, get some abrasive, get a piece of granite, start drilling, and uh, you achieve um, multiple results. So, the one experiment of uh, lost ancient high technology. Is not an exp it's it's a failure on every level, and I don't I don't believe uh, that it was uh, that this is authentic. I, d I don't believe that. Uh, lots more to come on this. It, this this rubbish needs to be torn to shreds, and it is just a big scam.